so thankful to be with you once again for the program Watch Therefore. And in this episode, we're going to see another expression from the Bible, God's Word, of how late an hour this is in the last of the last days of this age, and very specifically what we should do pertaining to Watch Therefore and Be Ready for our Savior to come for us, to take us back to that place He's been preparing for us. He promised to do so. Amen? First, a word of prayer. O oh, Father in heaven, in Messiah Jesus' name, thank you for the special time we have together. Thank you for everyone who's watching. Please bless them tremendously. If there's even one who needs to be saved by Jesus the Lord, please do it today, Father. Thank you. In Messiah Jesus' name, amen and amen. So we are continuing in this teaching uh, of the book of James. We're going to be in chapter 5 today. Let's begin with verse 1. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded, and their corrosion will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasure in the last days. Indeed, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out, and the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Sabaot. You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You have condemned. You have murdered the just. He does not resist you. And we see in the scriptures that in every generation, there is a harsh judgment upon those who use their money and power to oppress the poor. And certainly, these passages address that. And in a moment, we'll see how this passage is so important for this generation like none other. But first, we see the terrifying judgment for those with the ill-gotten gain that is corrupted and the once fine clothes that are moth-eaten. The gold and silver will not help them and, in fact, is a witness against them and will eat their flesh like fire in the fiery judgments of the Lord. Hold on, and we'll revisit the end of verse 3 regarding the last days. But in verse 4, one of the oppressive measures was these wicked, defrauded, poor hired laborers out of their pay. Those wages, again, ill-gotten gain, is crying out along with the cries of the defrauded laborers and have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. That's where it says, Lord of Sabaoth. It's in Hebrew, Adonai, or Yahweh Sabaoth, the Lord of the armies of heaven. Sounds a lot like a legal case in court, doesn't it? A witness against you crying out like a plaintiff in a courtroom. Why? Our Lord Jesus is the righteous judge who also is the Lord of the armies of heaven. Who could stop him from executing judgment? Nobody. Nobody. James 5.5, 5, you have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You have condemned. You have murdered the just. He does not resist you. All these things gained by these powerful oppressors from the helpless, poor, and powerless, and the lawless deeds done to these poor and defenseless are like the food given to the calf, being fattened up for the slaughter. They think they're getting away with everything and don't know that these things are preparing them for the day of judgment. Now let's go back to verse 3. The last days uh, pertains to two primary times, and I've spoken about this before many times on the program. One is the last days that began in Acts chapter 2, at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out in the first century at Pentecost, birthing the New Testament church. The other, here in James 3, pertains to the end 
of this age, leading to King Jesus returning to Jerusalem to sit on the throne of David, the David covenant, right? So let's look at it. James 5, 3, your gold and silver are corroded and their corrosion will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasure in the last days. So in the tribulation and in Revelation, we see the wrath of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. But in Revelation 18, for whom does the Lord save some of the last and most fierce wrath leading up to the grand finale of his wrath at the end of the book of Revelation? Well, that wrath is saved up for what I call and others call the banksters. The banksters. They're the bankers who are gangsters that uh, run so much of the world with money and power. The ones today who are taking control of the world and will hand it off to the Antichrist very soon. So many of these crazy things, killing and ruining people's lives that are transitioning everything to a global, economic, financial, religious, governmental, medical, educational, media system is being driven by these banksters. It's for control of the world's resources for power and money. See them judged in Revelation 18, which is the fall, the end of Babylon in the end times, the fall of end times Babylon, the global antichrist empire. Here we go. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come, and the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one buys their merchandise anymore, merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, and scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every kind of object of ivory, every kind of object of most precious wood, bronze, iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and incense, fragrant oil, and frankincense, wine, and oil, fine flour, and wheat, cattle, and sheep, horses, and chariots, chariots, and listen to this, and the bodies and souls of men. There you are with the human sex trafficking and other slave markets that are uh, burgeoning in the world today. There are more slaves on the earth right now than ever before in human history. And these banksters are running the program. The fruit that your soul longed for has gone from you, and all the things which are rich and splendid have gone from you, and you shall find them no more at all. The merchants of these things who became rich by her will stand at a distance for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen, purple, and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour such great riches came to nothing. Every shipmaster, all who travel by ship, sailors, and as many as trade on the sea stood at a distance and cried out when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What is like this great city? They threw dust on their heads and cried out, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, the great city in which all who had ships on the sea became rich by her wealth. From one hour she is made desolate. Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. Wow, wow. And those things are coming, folks. In this generation, in this fig tree generation that I teach about on the program, where Israel has become a nation, this generation shall not pass away till all these things come to pass. At the same time as the signs of the birth pangs that we're in right now and the days of Noah and Lot that I teach about often on the program. So having said that, what should we as disciples of Jesus the Lord, what should we do today? Well, you'll find out in just a moment. Remember, watch their form, be ready. King Jesus is coming for us any moment. I want to take a moment to say thank you to those who prayerfully and financially partner with Watch Therefore Ministries. Without you, we could not do this exciting and effective and timely kingdom work. The Lord certainly has raised you up for such a time as this. And again, Thank you. In Matthew 24, our great Savior Jesus 
speaks of a faithful, wise, and blessed servant who's watching for the master to come and doing what the master commanded. My aim for this television ministry and all of our ministries is to make faithful servant disciples of Messiah Jesus who will hear him say to them, well done, thy good and faithful servant. And one of the ways we walk that out is through Romans 1.16, taking the gospel and discipleship to the Jew first and then to the nations. To the Jew first with our ministry, Blessing Israeli Believers, co-founded by our ministry partner, John McTurnan and myself. We're working through our Israeli believing partners who are getting out the gospel, making disciples of Messiah Yeshua, planting believing congregations, helping to save babies from abortion, and also helping Holocaust survivors in the name of Messiah Yeshua and much more. And then to the nations through our ministry poured out for the nations where we're serving in African countries. I personally have served in 10 African countries and in India through one of our believing partners and also in America and through this Watch Therefore telecast all over the world. And one of the ways you can keep up with what's going on in this ministry is through our monthly Blessing Israeli Believers and Poured Out for the Nations newsletters. I write about things that will help us to watch therefore and be ready and also news and updates about what's going on here in Israel through our partners and in the nations. Oh, it's an exciting way also to keep up with what you can be praying for, for our prayer partners and what you're giving into for those who sow financially into this ministry. And I wanna talk about that for a moment. And as I talk about financial giving, first I wanna say, as always, if you haven't yet believed in our great savior, Jesus, please don't send any money into this ministry. It's simply our desire that you would be our guest watching the program today and that you would receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And for those who would like to lay up their treasures in heaven, who understand principles of giving and sowing into the kingdom of God, if this is a place the Lord's called you to do so, there's three primary platforms through which you can give. Our Watch Therefore television ministry, blessing Israeli believers and poured out for the nations. And you can do so through our website, watchtherefore.tv and also through the post, through snail mail at our PO box by check. And what a great way to lay your treasures up in heaven. Having said all these things, remember today more than ever, watch therefore and be ready. Our King and Savior Jesus is coming for us any moment. I was living in Israel at the Sea of Galilee, ministering across the Holy Land through our ministry partners, and the Lord was calling my family back to the USA, to Texas, with a vision. And part of that vision is to plant a church where we make faithful, wise, blessed, servant disciples of Messiah Jesus who are watching and ready for him to come and take us back to that place he's been preparing for us. He said, watch therefore and be ready. You don't know the hour or the day your Lord is coming, coming for us in the rapture to take us back to the Father's house. Look what the Lord has done. We had no money, we had no people, we had no building. And now the Lord's given us a handful, a few ministry prayer partners here in Texas. We've been joining together for prayer and asking the Lord for the way forward. And we're starting with our first Sunday here in January, Calvary Chapel. Watch therefore community fellowship. Now listen, this costs a lot of money and we know that our help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Maybe he would have you participate in this Watch Therefore Community Fellowship under the banner of Calvary Chapel. And you can do so, go to calvarychapelwtcf.com. Ask the Lord if he would have you to prayerfully and or financially participate in this new church plant. Oh, we're gonna make disciples who are watching and ready for King Jesus to come for us. Watch therefore and be ready. Welcome back to this episode of the program Watch Therefore. We've seen in James chapter five, the wrath of the Lord Jesus upon the wicked financial power brokers who are taking over the earth for the Antichrist today. And what should we do? Well, James five continues, therefore be patient brethren until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, 
waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Excuse me, hallelujah and hallelujah. He says to be patient until the coming of the Lord in the rapture where he comes to take us back to that place he has been preparing for us. And he speaks of the early and latter rain. The early rains in Israel are in the fall and the latter rains are in the spring. We need to be patient and establish our hearts for the rapture. We do that by receiving the comfort and hope of the rapture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. The dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. And see the grace of the Lord and how his grace teaches us to look for the rapture. And what, what's the rapture called? See this. For the, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So walking by the grace of the Lord, including looking for the blessed hope, the rapture with anticipation gives us comfort and hope. If we let the grace of our Savior Jesus teach us, we will be ready for the judgment seat of Christ that we see in 2 Corinthians 5. So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased rather, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So this will be a judgment for all born-again disciples of Messiah Jesus, not one of condemnation for sin, which is later the great white throne judgment. This judgment is for the scrutiny of our faithfulness to walk by grace in this hour. Yes, and at that time we will receive rewards for doing so, or there will be a lack of rewards for not walking by grace and not walking faithfully in the Lord while we're here on this earth. James 5, 9 do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. The warning is so serious. The word condemned here can mean eternal judgment, but in this context for the believer in Messiah Jesus would mean harsh discipline or judgment. And the book of James repeats getting control of our tongue and how much trouble our hot and bitter words can cause. You see, modern, easy believism, seeker-sensitive, user-friendly, Walmart Christianity doesn't like to think of our Lord Jesus as a judge. But he's not Barney the purple dinosaur or Santa Claus or a baby in a manger. He's no longer on the cross. He's the King of glory coming to judge and make war. Listen to this. In Revelation 19, Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, by the way, that's us, returning from heaven, heaven being raptured, and we're with the Lord. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God, and he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. You see, New Testament faith in Messiah Jesus has always been like this, the fear of the Lord. Repent, 
confess sins. What father doesn't chasten a son whom he loves? And be always ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus, the King of glory. Not so much that way today, but he still is. Why? Because he changes not. So what I'd like to do now is review, read the passages from James from which I've been teaching. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded and their corrosion will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasure in the last days. Indeed, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out, and the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You've condemned, you have murdered the just. He does not resist you. Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. So having heard these things today, where are you? Where are you with our Lord Jesus? Uh, has the Holy Spirit shown you any adjustments you need to make in your life? We're to continually live a life of confessing our sins and repenting, turning away from our sins. It's a way of staying clean before the Lord. Uh, some would say, well, that's legalistic. No, it's, it's faith in Messiah Jesus. It's walking with Him. It's walking in the light as He is in the light. And, and, and so the way we maintain and even expand our fellowship with Abba Father through our Lord Jesus is hearing the Word of God. And, and His Holy Spirit shows us things that convict us. It's not condemnation. It convicts us. No, this is something you need to get right with God in your heart, in your mind, in your life. And, and, and to make yourself ready every day for His coming. I know that's a very foreign thing in church today. But, and, and there are many good churches who do teach these things. So don't get me wrong. Yes, but many don't. Tragically, too many don't. And, and so where are you with the Lord? Are you ready for Him to come for us today in the rapture? Maybe you need to get saved. You know, I've had people call me from watching this program and say, I just got saved. <laughs> Hallelujah, maybe that's you. Call, tell me, you just got saved. I'd love to pray with you. And, and how do you do that? You, you begin to change your mind about your sin. That you've, like all of us, you've lied, cursed God's name, stolen, um, lusted, and, and much more in your life. And there's a place called hell and then the lake of fire where sinners go. But God loves you so much. Our Father in heaven loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to live a sinless life. Why? So when those nails went through his hands and his feet, an innocent man's blood spilled down that cross to pay for every time you have sinned against him. And you can experience and receive like a gift the goodness of the Lord towards you because he wants to forgive you. What do you have to do? You need to change your mind about who's the God of your life, you or him, the one who created you, who's the true and living God. You need to turn, begin to turn away from your sins in your heart, which will bear the fruit of repentance. You will, your life will change because you'll cooperate with the Holy Spirit in you who shows you know that's sin. You can't do that. You need to turn from that. And, and as you're beginning to think through these things and turn away from your sins in your heart and mind, you cry out to Jesus the Lord. Save me. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I want to commit my life to you. And if he'll do that, he'll send his Holy Spirit that was taken away from Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. That's when death became, came into the world, right? It's from sin. We're all dying of this disease called sin. But there's eternal life for you if you'll cry out to Jesus the Lord to forgive you and then to follow him. Commit to follow him and begin to follow him. And we have a brochure we like to give you called How to Begin My New Life in Christ that shows you the first steps you need to take to follow Him. So cry out to Him now, Jesus, Lord, save me. Jesus, Lord, forgive me. Jesus, Lord, give me a new life. I'm turning away from my old life to follow you. Yes? And, and, uh, and make sure you get in touch with us so we can get that brochure to you. Oh, Father in heaven, in Messiah Jesus' name, bless all who are watching today. And, and help us, Lord to apply these things, to walk out these things by your Holy Spirit, 
by cooperating with your grace. Give us wisdom and understanding of these things and help us to watch therefore and be ready, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes, and especially for, like I said, if you've called upon the name of the Lord, get in touch with me. I want to celebrate with you and get this free brochure to you. And for everybody who's watching more now than ever, watch therefore and be ready. King Jesus is coming for us any moment. Thank you for watching the program today. Watch Therefore is sponsored by the friends and partners of Watch Therefore Ministries. In future programs, we'll have many more Watch Therefore teachings from the Bible, worship, and exciting interviews with our believing partners in Israel and around the world. Please contact us at doveforisrael at gmail.com. That's D-O-V-F-O-R. I-S-R-A-E-L at gmail.com. And if you would like to subscribe to our newsletter, you can fill out a contact form on the website watchtherefore.tv. We also have audio programs available on our website watchtherefore.tv. We are on social media since it is a great tool to share the gospel and communicate with one another. You can also find us there at watchtherefore.tv. Until next time, we're watching for King Jesus to return. Watch therefore and be ready. We know he came. The lamb who was slain, he'll come again. Our conquering king on that day. His sword will go forth to take back and restore what belongs. What belongs?